there are many names of Allah that we use for ourselves also. Now that sounds bad, but it's true. Um, Allah, for example, is alim, he's knowledgeable. That's a word we use for ourselves also. There could be a scholar who's alim. فَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ alim. Similarly, you have Ra'uf, one of Allah's names, compassionate, understanding. That's a name even used for the Prophet of Allah. بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ So now the same exact word is being used for Allah, and it's also being used for a creation. Similarly, you have Allah Azza wa Jalla describing Himself as Hakim, wise. But that description of wisdom is given to others also. There could be an old man who's Hakim. That could happen, right? So you've got, and even simpler, you could have somebody who's able to see, and somebody who can see is a Basir. But Basir is also a name of Allah. So now we've got words in the Qur'an that are used for Allah, and at the same time they're also used for creation. It's important that even though the name is being, the same word is being used, we do tasbih of that name when we think about it for Allah. Which means we remove any notion that we have of ourselves when we share the same name. Because when we think of it for ourselves, when you think of a wise person, when you think of a knowledgeable person, when you think of a patient person, when you think of any of these, at or compassionate person, there are certain ideas that come in your head because you have a person in mind. The moment you have a person in mind, you have imperfection in mind. When you have to think about Allah, you have to think about perfection. So, what does that mean? It means three, dis three differences that have to always be kept in mind. Three differences. I'll, I'll, I'll like you to remember those, okay? The first of them is Allah's names, all of them, have no beginning and no end. Right? Allah's, for example, hearing has no beginning and no end. It's been there forever, it will always be there. My hearing, your hearing, anybody else's hearing always had a beginning and it will always have an end. That's the first difference. The second difference is my hearing has limits. I cannot hear what's happening on the other side of that wall. I do not hear what's happening one block away. I do not hear a conversation happening way back there. I barely hear a faint whisper. I don't hear the conversations happening between the jinns or the angels in the ghayb. I don't hear them. Allah's hearings has no limits. Allah's hearing is without limits. Mine is with limits. That's the second difference. So one was it's eternal, and the second one is limitless. And mine is always going to be limited. The third one is going to be that my hearing is not actually my own. It was given to me. I don't actually own it. I have no rights to it. Allah gave it, Allah will take it away. My knowledge is something Allah gave. My, if I have wisdom, it's Allah's given. If I have patience, it's Allah's given. Any attribute that I possess is actually a grant, not owned by myself. It's not mine, it is given, and at a time, Allah can what? Take it away, because I have no rights over it. Allah's attributes, the same word being used for Allah, nobody gave it to Him, and nobody can take it away. It, it's entirely His own belonging. These three distinctions are very, very important to understand.